a tutorial about the very basic um, tweening that you can do with Adobe Animate so it's your first animations and so you should open Adobe Animate and then you should see a screen that looks something like this that's got a pop-up box and the one that you need to select is Action Script 3 none of the other ones okay and then that opens a, a new file um, and as you can see in the middle there's a there's a white rectangle which is the stage and then along the top is a timeline and there's a playhead and this counts by frames and it shows you how many seconds have passed for how many frames and in this case if I select the stage you'll see if we open the properties which are not open for some reason open the properties inspector and I'll, I'll just park it over here Oops, hello, there we are. Then you should be able to see that the stage is down here. So I've select, oops, and I've changed the color. There we go, so change to black. I'll, I'll leave it at white though. And then you can change the size of the stage. So it counts in pixels, and this is the stage width. So I'm just gonna make it slightly bigger. I'm gonna make it mine 600. This is annoying, this thing. So I just actually, you just type in 600. Just make it a bit wider. So it's 600 by 400. Um, and you can see that the frames per second is 24, which is why up here, after 24 frames have passed, one second appears. So you can keep an eye on how the timing is going for your animations. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to insert a new symbol. And we're going to we make sure that it's a movie clip. So there's a drop-down menu that also says button and graphic. If any of those are selected, then just go in and select the movie clip. And I'm going to call this a rectangle because that's what I'm going to make. So call, call your movie clips or your new symbols, call them by a name that makes sense. Don't just call them untitled or something which you're never going to find if you have to go back and look at it later. You say OK. And then you'll see that, ridiculously, <laughs> in a way, is that you've got, everything's changed. So we're actually, the scene one is here, and we're actually inside of a movie clip that's called Rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle. Um, and then the stroke color and the fill color down at the bottom of the screen. So if I select the stroke color and turn and then select um, this little box here that's got a red stripe through it, which means no color, then it will not have an outline on it. And then if I hit the shift key when I draw, same with any of the Adobe's tools, it will actually make a, a, a square rather than a rectangle. And then the next thing we need to do, there's a little tiny cross down here, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that my rectangle is absolutely aligned with that cross. And the way you do that is you select the Align tool. If, if it's not showing here, oh, got an email. If it's not showing here, then you need to go into your window and show, and then the Align action is down there. So it opens it up. We want to align it to the stage this time. You can align you can align one object with lots of different objects that are on the stage, but in this case we want to align it to the stage. So I select the object, make sure it's selected, otherwise it won't work. And then I'm going to align it horizontally and vertically. So you can see it's bang, that little cross is now bang in the middle of my square. And that just it just it just allows you to make sure that things are placed exactly as you expect them to be a bit later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a tween on this and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to rotate um, this rectangle. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to, to make some, some frames so that it's got space and time in which to rotate. So I'm just simply going to, oh, you, can, you can either go to insert timeline frame and you see next to that it says F5, so it's made one, one extra frame, that's not really enough. So just as a shortcut, I can hit F5, and I'll go all the way up to 10 frames. And then you can select anywhere on that timeline, anywhere at all, it doesn't matter whether it's on the first frame or the last frame. And then if you're on a Mac, control right click, if you're on a PC, just right click, and then you want to create a classic tween. So you, what you should immediately see is that your frames have, have stopped being grey and have now turned a kind of mauve colour with lots of little dots on them. So 
what we've done is so all animations have got a start point which is denoted by a keyframe and we also now we need we've told it it's going to animate but now we need to, to have an end point for the animation so at the other end of it I'm, I'm going to put in I'm going to insert timeline a keyframe and the shortcut for this is F6 so it's really important that you understand that you remember F5 is add frame F6 is a keyframe and keyframes denote change so it might just be that you want something to be a bit longer you need to add some normal frames that's f5 if you've got a change that you want to happen it's going to be an f6 so what we're going to do is we're going to go onto that frame and then I'm going to simply move my rectangle and I'm going to do it by using the free transform tool and if you if you mouse over it you can see you can you can do various things you can you can um, change the shape of it but all I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to um, rotate it and I'm going to hit the shift key so that it rotates 45 degrees and then you simply drag it hello there we go now there we should so we should be able to if we do con con command enter you won't see anything yet but there we are there it is so first of all the first turn of it now to, to carry on turning this so that it goes all the way back to the beginning again is is a bit easier so all you can all you need to do is add some f5s so i could actually go up to about 40 frames or something like that so i know it's taken me 10 frames to get this far so if i go to frame 20 i can simply put in another keyframe there and then turn it again easy peasy and then add another 10 frames an f6 again another keyframe because it's going to change turn it again and then up to frame 40 another keyframe at, at frame 40 and turn it again and we should oops we should be back to the beginning so let's make sure that we are there we go so you can move this is the playhead that I'm moving this little red triangular t across the top so if you want to make sure that things are going as according to plan and you can just move that playhead with backwards and forwards and find out that your animation is working as you expect. So we finished making our first movie clip, which is our rotating triangle. We're going to go back to scene one. So we're inside of, of its, its, its own timeline now. We go back to scene one and it's gone. Where's it gone? Well, if you want to find things that you've made, if you go into the library, you should be able to find them. So let's go and make sure. Turn the library on. There it is. And for some reason, it's not showing up. Oh, it's because I've got the properties on the top of it. There we go. That's good, wasn't it? Okay, so we've got inside, we've got a rectangle. We've got a tween as well. But what we're interested in is this rectangle. And there's a funny little icon next to it. And that icon denotes a movie clip. And you should remember that you called your movie clip rectangle. So now I can just simply drag that onto the main timeline, which is, in this case, is called scene one. And then to test it, you can either go make sure that it's working you can either go to control and then test movie in animate and the shortcut for that is command enter if you're on a Mac and or control enter if you're on a PC so I'm hitting command enter and there it is merrily rotating on its merry way um, and that for the just to finish off this tutorial to, to remind you you can then have lots of different triangle uh, of rectangles if you want to. You can individually change the size of them. So you might have a larger one and smaller ones. Let's see what that does. So there we are. They're all starting off at the same time. They're all rotating at the same rate because my movie clip that's called Rectangle is in a way is like the mothership. So these are all the children and actually that's what they call it in coding as well is that these Anything that I change on that mothership will change these. So let's prove that point. In order to edit, if you decide actually I don't want it to be red, I want it to be a different colour. I'll just bring this over a bit more. Um, if you just double click, it doesn't matter which one, you can either double click on the movie clip here in the library. That brings up that um, brings up that individual movie clip again. And then if I wanted to change the colour of it, I simply select it and then change the colour. 
Let's change it to green. Oh, hello. Didn't change it. I'm going to have to stamp it, that's why. Oop, 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 oop. Oh, I know. You have to double click it. That's what the problem was. So then I just stamp it with green and then go back into rectangle. So you have to remember where you are. You have to remember that you're inside of a movie clip, inside of a tween. And then, there we are, it's changed to green. So if I go back to scene one, you'll see all of them have changed to green. So another thing to know is that you might not want all of them to be green. You might want them to be different colours. So rather than having to build, as long as you, they're doing the same thing and they're the same shape and everything, you, what you can do is you can put different colours on different movie clips. And the reason you can do that is because you're not changing the, the movie clip itself. What you're doing is changing a kind of a... Um, container that they're sitting in so these are all these these have got containers around them which they're called instances of that movie clip so what I can do is I can select this one I can go into my properties again and it knows that I've selected it, it won't work unless you don't unless you select it and then I can add a color effect to it so I could tint it so instead of it being green I can tint it to be red and then I've got to turn the tint right up there we are so now we've got a red one and two green ones And you can do that as many times as you like. You can also do things like, I'll select a different one for this. You can do things like once you've selected it, you can also change the alpha. So you could turn the alpha down, which is the transparency. Um, you can also put some drop shadows on things. Any of these, you can see, there you go, it's got drop shadow on it now. So there's lots of different filters and all the kind of similar things that you'd have in all the Adobe programs. Um, so there, the, the important thing to notice about this really I suppose is that actually on scene one we've only got one frame but because these are little movie clips in themselves they're all running, they're staying on the first frame but they're all running on their own individual timelines. And that's the end of the first tutorial.